Yes, yeah, so welcome back to the Sports Show. We're a couple of weeks into the softball season, of course, so we thought we'd better find out what's going on. So we've got an up-and-coming superstar from the Port Adelaide Magpies, Gemma Letton, joins us. Gemma, how are you? Thanks for having me. I'm very yeah. well, thank you. The smiling assassin, we can see why, can't we? <laughs> Beautiful smile. Who gave you that, who gave you that tag? Oh, well, my Riverland family back home, the softball fam, and it's kind of just made its way back up to Adelaide. Is it? Okay, let's talk about the Riverland, because your family, family have the egg farm down there, yes. down at Renmark, so having a chat about that. How long? Since childhood for you, the egg farm? Oh, yeah, well, my grandparents started it like nearly 60 years ago now, so... Wow. Yeah. What's, Dad, your, what's your jobs growing up on the oh, egg farm? Collecting the eggs, <laughs> walking around the yards. Yeah, doing all those kind of jobs. Is it one of those great lifestyles? Because you're on the river as well. Yes. So obviously you can water ski, you're into the river, you can motorbike, and you would have played just about every sport possible that Redmark had to offer. Yeah, so I grew up playing like netball. Well, I started T-ball when I was five, moved to softball when I was 10, played a couple of years of baseball here and there with the boys, um, did a little athletics, volleyball with school. Yeah, bit of footy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So how did you finish up with softball? Uh, well, what just softball. So now it's just softball, oh, isn't it? No, I still no? play footy, volleyball. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a pretty busy schedule. But the coaches are happy about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but was there a pivotal moment for you where you sort of think that maybe softball is your favourite? Or is it your favourite? Or do you kind of favour the others as well as equally? You're just extra good at yeah, softball. Yeah, I say I do prefer softball. When I first trialled for my first state team, I thought, why not? Give it a go. Mm -hmm try something different and I made it and then I did well I met some of my best friends now so it's just continued through that and yeah I love it enjoy it all right so how do you finish up at the magpies magpies from Renmark to the magpies well my state coach he asked me to come up and just been there ever since so when you talk about coming from the Riverland I know you've moved up full-time now because you've started uni so yeah. this is your first time in the city so all the other times has been drive up and back up and back Who, who's been the driver mum or dad or my both? dad your dad? dad loves to drive we'll just do day trips so when you come up to play on a, on a Wednesday or a Saturday you're just up for the day and then back straight after most of the time it was yeah well we that's yeah. a fair commitment <laughs> isn't it <laughs> did you do that Britt did you do a lot of driving for your training yeah, 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 well, my parents did. I think the day that I got my peas. Have you got your peas? Yeah. yeah best day of mum's life, so, <laughs> which is as it is. So, yeah, no, it's a big commitment from the whole family. Um, you Are you living alone now or yeah. with other students? No, I'm living by myself now. Yeah. So. How's that going, like being away from the family, um, I guess, home that you've been there since you were mm. a kid? It, it's been hard, but it's been good as well. Like, mm. I've just developed so much more independency and living to... Uh, live by myself, I guess, and doing everything by myself. All right, let's talk about doing things as a team then. So you've played Walkerville <laughs> so far, you've played Glenelg, you've beaten both of those. Yes. And uh, you've played particularly well in both of those, well, three of those games now, I guess. So this weekend is who? We're against Sturt. Okay, so, oh, one of the big guns. Yeah, premiership okay. team last season, yep. so it's going to be a good comp. It's going to be an exciting game. Yep, so you like playing out in the outfit. Why the outfit? That's where all the running gets done. What's yeah. made you play out there? I do love the run. Yep. I love the chase down the ball. It's a lot of fun. So when you come up here to play, obviously the girls will be able to practice during the week. Well, now you can because you've yes. moved up here. Was it difficult when you just turn up for the game? Whereas they've been able to practice and get an understanding of each other? Yeah, there's an understanding. Like All the girls have been really welcoming and understanding of that. But um, our pitcher, Johanna Gural, she's moved down to Renmark, so I just get to train with her now, which is really, really good. And what is your training regime at the moment for, I guess, not only softball but the other sports? How many days a week do you train and what does it look like for you? At the moment, it's four times a week. So <laughs> training for port on Tuesdays, yeah. baseball training on Wednesday nights, another training occasionally on a Thursday, games on Saturday, baseball on Sunday. And how much extra stuff do you do on top of that? Like, do you, Is your gym included in that or it's just kind of... Do you do any of that yet? Well, Have you done any extra? We well, do need to start doing the gym. We'll get onto that yeah. <laughs> when I come back for uni next year. But yeah. yeah, I think just moving up to Adelaide this year, I've had to just like chillax a little bit more and work myself into it. But I'll go out for a run every now and then, get out of the house. What was the move like for you? You know, because country girl, a lot of country girls are quite happy in the country. Was it, has it been a hard transition to adjust to living to city life? Yeah, well, especially like the traffic. It's like stoplights every <laughs> kilometre and you've got to wait and wait. But I'm getting used to it now, hey. a lot more confident. Hey, you mentioned just before when you were talking to Britt about baseball and softball. Yeah. Are, are they, is there a nice flow into both of those games? Yeah, I feel like, like developing the baseball and softball, I've had a better eye, like hand-eye coordination. I can hit better. 
Um, I pitch as well on baseball, so that's over arm. Can't pitch in softball to no. save myself though. But um, the distance from bases, it's 60 feet in softball and then 90 feet base distance in baseball. So is it harder to read it? Which one's harder to read coming out of the pitches? The, the throw from the top or the throw from under? Which one do you find harder softball. to pick? Softball. Right. Yeah. Our top pitchers in our league can throw nearly 90, 100 oh, k's yeah. per hour and they've got a movement on as well, like drop balls, rises, curves. Yeah. So That's the harder one to pick. Yeah. 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 Okay. And did you watch the girls play at the Tokyo Olympics? Yes. Yeah. How was that for you, watching that? It was very exciting. Very yeah. exciting because like, everyone's watching softball, like, the young girls coming up, that's got something for them to aspire to. Mm. You know when you're sitting there watching it, you're watching the Olympic Games, so Britt and I, for example, we're sitting there and we're enjoying the game. Yes. And I imagine the same for you when the swimmers are in it, you're dissecting parts of the game as well. Do you, yeah. you catch yourself doing that? Oh, for sure, for yeah. sure. So what are you looking at when you're dissecting? Are you looking at, at the batter? Are you looking at the pitcher? Are you looking at when is the time to run? Or are you, you looking at all of that? Now for me, it's looking at the batting because I don't know much about the other stuff. pitching. Yeah. But watching the batting, seeing what pitches they select, so like how they do it. The different game plays. When you talk about, is that an advantage for you now that the pitchers move down to Renmark so you can bat against her yeah. pitching? Has that been a big advantage for you? Yeah, definitely. Like, I used to catch to her back home, but now my brother's stepped up so he catches to her while I'm not there. So now yeah. I'll be able to hit uh, against her. Okay, that's that not the can... reason she moved because of your brother, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to get into that. Um, what's the longest you've hit, like distance? Have you measured it or are you not too no, sure? No, I haven't really measured it. I kind of just hit the ball and then head down, spin Run. in the first. Yeah. yeah. Ah, so. You know how they talk in your uh, first game, I think you had a single and then you had a double. Yes. Just, just for the viewers, explain what a single is versus a double. Okay, so a single is when you just make it to first base. Yep. Double is when you go all the way around to second base. Okay. In one hit, like one consecutive. What about a sacrifice? Have sacrifice. you had to sacrifice yet? Have you had to sacrifice for someone to get home? Yes, yeah, so there's yep. a sacrifice fly, so that's when you hit the ball up in the air. Outfielders catch it, but there's a person on, like, say, third base or second base, and they have to tag up. When the ball's caught, they can sprint. They can run. I want to know, when you're coming into bat, and you go, I've worked out this picture, I reckon I can get a home run on this, and mm. the coach comes over and goes, sacrifice. What's going through your head then? Do you, do you ever go, you're kidding, aren't you? Yeah, you're you kidding. do kick yourself. If yeah. you're feeling confident and you can hit it, you're like, yeah. oh... Really? Can't I just but, have a crack? <laughs> yeah, you got to do the team thing though. Yeah, okay. Have you ever gone against that call? Like, you just be like, I'm just going for it. No, I trust my coaches. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm usually a bunter anyway, I can't hit dingers. <laughs> yeah. So now you're involved in the, in the Magpie Softball Club. We've had a couple of girls on over the last couple of years here. It, it seems a really family orientated club. Have you oh, found that? That's sure. one of the things you enjoy about it? Definitely. They're so welcoming and just like a lovely group of people. Like, you make friends for life there. Yeah, you, you're identified early in your softball career uh, as a future player. You know, then there was the the Aussie team. Then there's the identification. Have you been through all of that? What's the next step for you, Gemma? What, what do you want out of oh, I softball? Oh, well, ever next? since I was like younger, I said I wanted to reach the highest level that I could and just keep playing at my best and see where it takes me. I guess the scouts seem to say that's more than possible for you. Do you do you think about that at all? Do you think you could play softball for Australia one day, as opposed to it's just my ambition to get there. Mm, well, that would be the dream, yeah. but don't want to set the expectations too high and then no, disappoint no, myself. No, but great. Maybe you should ask Britt, did you set yourself at a you time? You've got to believe in yourself. Yeah, yeah. you've got you to believe that you can do it before you actually achieve it. And I didn't even voice that to anyone. Mm. But yeah, I think just like deep down, I knew it was something that I wanted. And if I worked hard enough, yeah. Oh, for sure. You can achieve it. So yeah, no, definitely be following your... Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I'm taking career, yeah. hopefully. Taking all the opportunities I get at the moment, so like trialling for state teams and training. Like I'm training with the best girls in our competition at the moment and I, like five years ago I wouldn't mm. think I'd be able to mm. make that. Yeah, so well, You're in the state squad at the moment. When do they start pruning that back? Do you know? Well, I'm not sure. Well, it just depended on this COVID situation, obviously, yep. whether this carnival is going to go ahead. It was mm. supposed to go ahead in January, but now it's been pushed back to April. So hopefully it goes ahead, but we are training currently every so often, just keeping that squad together. All right, you have to get put under the Bonson burner at some stage, so we might as well start with us. <laughs> a lot of talk about double vaxxing in sport at the moment. There have been some athletes around the world that have said they won't double vax. Where does Gemma sit with vaccination? And if you had to double vax to play, would you do it or? Yeah, well, I'm booked in yep. for my vax now, so. 
you're yeah. doing it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. got to do what you got to do. Yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Most of the girls would be that way. I would have thought if you're going to play with the state team, you have to be vaccinated. Mm. Well, it hasn't been the topic of conversation yeah. yet, no. but... I'm thinking it would be, and most of the girls are teachers, so. Yeah, it's a really interesting one because in South Australia, we've been fairly COVID-free, really. Mm, we've been yes. able to do just about everything. And I talk to lots of athletes around Australia, and they're all keen to just get the double vax, and especially in Melbourne, they want to do it just to get out. Mm. You know, yeah. they're not, not even about sport, can we just have our freedom back? So mm. it's a really interesting one when you ask people the question here versus people that have been stuck in COVID. So we'd actually like the Victorians not to be at the softball <laughs> state championships because that makes it better for South Australia. Yeah. Hey, Gemma, really enjoyed you coming in. Good luck with it. And Thank uh, you. I know you're taking a break after uni and back to the farm collecting eggs in the water. Don't get injured water skiing like some of our athletes have done. Uh, Gemma Leighton was our special guest. Keep an eye on her. She's going to be a superstar in the next couple of years here in South Australia and hopefully for Australia. Stay with us. <laughs>